Bad actors need to be held accountable. So on Tuesday, Scottsdale authorities filed charges on an establishment named Riot House. And they're not alone. This is the first time we've seen a charge of this nature, and frankly, it's the first time we've seen an executive order. We've never had anything like this before. So going after packed Old Town bars, one popular Scottsdale club is the first one to be hit with charges for violating Governor Ducey's executive orders on social distancing and face coverings as Arizona's coronavirus cases are going up big time. Riot House is what we're talking about here, has decided now to shut its doors for this weekend and maybe beyond. Management says there are other two bars, El Jefe and Whiskey Row, will also close this weekend, even though they haven't been charged. So we spoke with management this morning and here's what she had to say. If we've gone above and beyond what our regulating authorities have asked us to do as far as social distancing and cleanliness. So we have, you can see right now, we have X's on the sidewalk, we have stanchions, lines. When you would come into our locations, not only would we mind the queue, if you will, outside, but then as they would come in, they would be reminded about social distancing and please be safe. Same thing with the staff inside. So it's just, we're doing everything we can, but honestly, there's no playbook for this. Scottsdale Mayor Jim Lane responding to that misdemeanor, misdemeanor tweeting since reopening processes were put into place. Scottsdale police have worked frequently and proactively with restaurants in the city to ensure they understand rules and are compliant, adding most businesses have been successful following new rules and he hopes the criminal charges filed will encourage other businesses to abide by the law. The liquor department sent final notices to comply to seven other bars, ordering them to comply with social distancing and mask requirements, including Bottled Blonde, Patties, Casa Amigos, International Maya Day and Nightclub, Hi-Fi as well. All of this coming as Arizona's health officials report another 3,428 COVID-19 cases today. So joining us now is the mayor of Scottsdale, Jim Lane. Good morning to you. Good morning, Yetta. So let's talk about these bars, uh, not only violating the state's orders, but also violating their own plans that they had in place to follow social distancing and to keep people safe. And then there's a video from about a month ago, a month or so ago, where uh, those bars were crowded. It made national news. Uh, I'm sure it was cringeworthy to see. And I'm wondering if there was anything done back then when those videos emerged to talk to the bars about, hey, this is not safe. Yeah, yes, there were, and certainly I, I made some contacts initially before we made any changes to the program. But once the, uh, the, the governor turned it over to us uh, last week, uh, we had to rapidly move to uh, uh, take on some additional things, which are specifically going, went to how do we mitigate uh, the kinds of operations that, where people are gonna be in close proximity just uh, by the nature of the business in that. And since uh, the nightclubs had been included in restaurants with uh, dine-in service, which was a definition that was really not well-defined, and the, the, uh, the opportunity to uh, come in under that category was embraced, uh, we had some real difficulty with the idea of what was gonna be required on masking, and also with the protocol plans that they had put in place and then the, the, the governor made sure that uh, in this last 2020-40 uh, uh, executive order that we would be enforcing that too. And that's actually what this has come under, and that was their protocols that they had put in place. Uh, uh, Mayor Lane, sorry underwater. to interrupt you, but uh, I'm wondering, uh, because Scottsdale is known for the bar activity, did you expect uh, for the bar activity to kick up as soon as those uh, orders were lifted. And I'm wondering when you did talk to those bar owners, was there any pushback uh, to what was needing to be done? Actually, uh, the, I spoke to uh, three major uh, uh, owners of a number of facilities, uh, including Riot Hospitality and, uh, and two others. But nevertheless, they, um, the owners themselves, they seemingly embraced and were going to be cooperative. And frankly, with, in exchange for that, we were talking about the fact that we were going to be working with them and, and having warnings where, where they were, you know, an education and warning. Uh, but with the, the idea that there was actually a protocol plan on, 
on uh, hand with us right now and, and had already been established, that's the first area that became a problem because warnings went out on that that they would have to. We have a lot that had complied and had been complying even with uh, before the shift uh, in the approach uh, that the governor took with 2020-40. So, so I have to ask you again, just in case I missed it, did were there any pushback from the owners of the bars when you were telling them that they needed to comply with what was going on with this pandemic? No. Okay. I mean, simply the answer is no. There was a, a working situation where they clearly understood that the uh, intensity of the percentage increase in positive cases being uh, presented is on a steep incline from 5% and now at, at some 21% okay. uh, over the last several weeks. So they, they understood exactly where it was and what was at stake. So we were very clear about that. And I, I can't say that I heard any objection. Okay, so 20, 30, 40 years old, or 40 year olds, the people in that age group is where these COVID numbers are surging even higher. That's pretty much the party group. I'm wondering, uh, moving forward, even though these bars are saying they're closing indefinitely, what is your message to not only the, the, the club owners, or I'm sorry, the bar owners, but to people who are just anxiously wanting to get out in Scottsdale and uh, be social? <laughs> You know, we're trying to stay open. That's the primary thing. In view of some of the statistics that are on a negative trend line, uh, and frankly, have the additional issue of exceeding or potentially taxing some of the medical resources and healthcare resources for the general public, okay. and still having the operations at a normal case and, and accommodating COVID-19, we felt that it was important that we had to make the extra step. All right, Scottsdale Mayor Jim Lane, you got a lot on your plate. Thank you for giving us your time this morning.